I love to see the towns passing by and arrive these rails neath God's blue sky. Let me travel this land from the mountains to the sea, cause that's the life I believe. And when I'm gone and at my grave you stand, say God called home your rambling man. Welcome to Ramble Man Podcast, episode number 51. This one is with Amanda Hara. She is a broadcaster here in Knoxville, Tennessee, an anchor on WVLT. It's great having a conversation with her, kind of about where she came from, how she got into it, and kind of her thoughts on what it's like in the news world right now. If you'd like to learn more about Amanda, you can visit her website at amandahara.org, A M A N D A H A R A.org. Or you can give her a follow on Twitter. Twitter at Amanda Hara or follow her on Instagram at A Hara or find her Facebook page Amanda Hara. Just look for the little blue check mark. Sponsor this week is Jackie's Dream. Jackie's Dream is a restaurant here in Knoxville, Tennessee. It's soul food, food for the soul, soul food. They they propose it on their website that they're the best soul food in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'd argue that they may be the best soul food in the world. Go in there, order the Jody. If you'd like to know more about Jackie's Dream or find out when they're open or take a look at their menu, you can find them online at jackiesdreamcafe.com without much further ado here's the episode check into the mic check one two one two check one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. oh yeah that's the other thing i'm not being rude if i'm not looking at you i'm just yeah. checking my levels i got you um <clears throat> are you originally from here no i'm originally from the seattle area so okay uh snoqualmie washington which is about 20 minutes east. It's the mountain pass that you drive over to get to eastern Washington. Okay. Never heard of it. No. Yeah. Never been to the Pacific Northwest. Northwest. It was always cost prohibitive. Yeah. Down here. It's getting a lot cheaper recently. Mm -hmm. You can get you can get there a lot easier. I will tell you, you think you've never heard of Snoqualmie, Washington, but then I tell you about northern exposure, and gotcha. now you know all about it. That's I thought where you were going to say Twin Peaks. But. And Twin Peaks. <laughs> Both both film there okay in different varying degrees that's crazy like a lot of the river scenes were yeah. all by my house that's yeah. okay so what <laughs> how long have you been a broadcaster okay like, so what year is it it is 2019 2019 so 16 years okay mama's old since you were four years old since okay. i was four years old the math on that <laughs> Seems not scientific. <laughs> <laughs> How many years have you been in Knoxville? Okay, so I've been in Knoxville almost eight years. Yeah. yeah. Eight years. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many places were you at before? Where'd you go to college? I went to Washington State University, which okay. is in eastern Washington. That's why Snoqualmie is important, because oh you have to God. drive past it to get to my college. Um, if you know Idaho, never I'm heard out. of it. I'm out. You're out. Well, I, I was a football player at Fulton, so whenever I was in, it was either geography or history. I don't know because it's the head football coach, and I just worked out and painted the ad signs for the football field. That's so smart. It's yeah. a good way to get out of school. <laughs> um, but my college was right next to, uh, I had like 10 minutes from Idaho, so we were right there on the okay. border of Washington State and Idaho. And then when I was a senior in college, my parents were like, oh, we are so tired of you, and finally we have a way to get away. And so they moved with my brother uh -huh. to Franklin, Tennessee, which oh. is just outside of Nashville. Yeah. And they're like, see you later. Don't call us. We'll call you. And they never called me. <laughs> what made them decide on Franklin? <laughs> my dad had retired, and my mom was offered a job with Healthways, which is a healthcare company okay. out that way. Okay. And so that's how they ended up getting there. So my brother went to high school there. My brother yeah. ended up going to University of Tennessee. Nice. Um, and then I graduated college. Yeah. And I was like, 
not ready to cut the cord, I think, from my parents. <laughs> so I found out where they were yeah. and showed up in Nashville. Oh, my God. Did an internship there. Um, and then I worked in Evansville, Indiana. Okay. That was my I first job. I do know job. Evansville. Yeah. It's a lovely place. When I worked at the paper the last time we did, uh, we were the, we managed 14 papers across the country. Mm-hmm. And one of them was Evansville. I think it was the Courier yeah. Journal, maybe. Yeah. I think is what it was. Yeah. So that was my first job. At um, the paper or no, the TV? No, at WEHT was a TV station. EHT. It's okay. A, it was an ABC affiliate. Okay. During the height of Lost. Do you remember Lost? I do. Rem- I have seen every episode of Lost. Me too. Yeah. So that was like right around that time that Lost was in its prime. Uh, then I worked in Lexington, Kentucky. Okay. Yeah. And then I worked in Nashville at WTVF News Channel 5. Okay. And then I came here. And you're on Channel 5 here? Well, Channel 8. Yeah. But it's it, on it 5. It is on, on 5 on some funny. providers. Yeah, it is kind of funny. That's funny. Uh, I didn't think about that. What? It, I have all the questions now. Uh, what is that like? Like going from place to place to place? Like, do you seek that out for a new... Or do you get recruited? Like, how does that work? Because I know everybody moves around a lot. Yeah, it actually, and how I fell into that was kind of strange because you do. You have to move so much. And yeah. for me, I'm somebody who struggles with a lot of anxiety, um, just naturally. And so change is really hard for me. Yeah. Um, so you would think that that would prohibit me from moving so much, <laughs> but somehow, some way I did it and, um, you get used to it. Okay. I, and I think I'm also one of those people that likes a new challenge. And so okay. m- moving provides a new challenge because you're working in smaller markets, you're learning as much as you can, and then you kind of outgrow it and you yeah. want to go to the next market and learn a little bit more and work with people with more experience and then hop the train and do it all over again. So if you're somebody who really has a passion for learning, pushing the limits, pushing yourself, it's, it's a fun ride. Now I'm kind of at the point where I'm not going to move unless, you know, I've got the good gig. So yeah, I'm not going to move unless I'm not going to move. Basically everything I love (laughs) is and have is here. Uh Oh, Uh Yep. What we drop? Our phone? I dropped my phone. Is it broken? No, I'm keeping my, making sure I, I've got you on time. Oh, okay. I'm just making sure. Now nah, we're good. Um, so when you first start out, so right now you are an anchor mm-hmm. on the, in the prime spot in the primo, primo gig, right? Some, some would say now other people like the morning show and they, okay. they, they think that's the prime gig. So it's all kind of. What's your lifestyle? But yeah, we do the pri- I do the primetime newscast, so the but, 6, 10, and 11. So, but when you started, did you start as like a beat reporter to where you were actually going out and finding stories? Or? I was so green that I didn't even get a beat. Oh, the really? The beat was all the beats. <laughs> really? And I have okay. no rhythm. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, my first job in Evansville, I was what we would call a general assignment reporter. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a huge learning curve, huge learning curve. Um, but such a great experience to start. I think it was like market 99. The country oh has like God. 200 and some odd markets. And number one is New York. So yeah. I'm in this tiny little market, but working with really well established um, and experienced people for okay. a small newsroom, um, the anchors, the reporters, the producers, the photographers, they were all yeah. so incredibly talented. Yeah. Um, and so that was a great experience to be able to start in a situation like that. Yeah. And you get run through the ringer. <laughs> yeah, I can For imagine. people who aren't naturally good, it's a huge learning curve. I mean, your ego just gets stomped in the ground. You yeah. get chewed up and spit out. And if you make it, you're stronger for it. So when you were doing that, did that mean you were on your own to find stories or did you have producers more funneling new stories? So typically how it works in a newsroom and especially in these smaller newsrooms is you're experienced. You've got an experienced group of people who kind of make up the core editorial okay. team. So like okay. for for us here in Knoxville at WVLT, I would say that team is probably like Ted, 
my co-anchor, myself, our news directors, um, and some of our executive producers. Those yeah. are the ones who are really making the shots. Now, you rely on your reporters to come in with pitches and ideas to right. your daily meetings. Um, but the editorial staff is really there to determine, is this something our viewers want to see? Is this relevant? How do we make this interesting and entertaining? Because that's that's part of the game. Um, and I feel like you almost have to a little bit stay ahead of the curve, too. You to do. To find, like, the next thing as opposed to find it as it's already been happening for a while. Exactly. And that's that's the trick is, like, how how can we be on the front end of things that are going to happen in the future. I mean, that really yeah. is a big part of it. But in Evansville, yeah, you come to the table with story ideas every day. And, you know, that's how you learn whether or not you're learning as a young reporter. Okay. Are they picking my stories? Um, and are my stories making a difference? Okay. And for a long while there, they weren't picking my stories. Yeah. When I had a pitch. Yeah. And, you know, the stories I was doing, they were probably making a difference. But... You know, you just grow a lot in those first years, which is kind of unfortunate because I had that opportunity to go to a small market, learn the ropes from very experienced people. Yeah. Nowadays, kids are getting out of college and they're working in mid-sized markets yeah. with other people who don't have that experience most of the time. And they're not learning like they should be. And I almost wonder in following what people do and, you know social media and YouTube and everything, I almost feel like some too are kind of doing their own thing so that when they go to college and then they go out, they may be less adapt to, they may be less willing to adapt to what it's like in a newsroom. You know what I mean? That's like, an interesting. Do you have a specific example? Not that I could probably say on microphone, okay. but, but I mean, I feel like everybody now is a roving, a lot of people f consider themselves like roving report reporters yes i understand so, what you're saying so, so it's like well i'm the tastemaker because and i'm not slacking on the person who it may sound like i'm slacking on but it's like well i'm a tastemaker in this town and i shoot these videos at these restaurants so they should put me on the news yeah social media has really changed the game and yeah. i think that's kind of what you're talking about so you have yeah. people that have youtube channels and instagram accounts and they um they're providing something that people want for sure but i think that's sometimes different than journalism um, that's more niche and it's it's more niche and it's it's different in a way people who go to college and study journalism yeah they understand the the ethical guidelines that oh, really yeah. should should guide you every day and yeah. they um you know have some sort of framework for for the um, tool that yeah. we're stewards of. Yeah. And so, uh, but yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Everybody is out there. Yeah. In yeah. some form or fashion. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants attention. <laughs> and it, it, it is. It's weird. Like, so I went to the Edward R. Murrow yeah. School of Communication in Washington State. And like, he would probably die all over again if he saw what's, considered acceptable and normal like yeah in no in no world would anyone know any personal details about me yeah but because of the advent of social media yeah it's a tool that allows us to connect with our viewers and i love that part of it yeah um i love sharing parts of my life with viewers and i like them sharing their lives with me because i think that puts you in a position to be better embedded in the community that you're serving yeah um, but I think that a lot of these old school founding fathers of journalism yeah. would be like, what, why, why do you have an Instagram account? Why are you putting pictures of yourself from your wedding yeah. on the internet? Or yeah. like, what is this? That's not really journal. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's interesting how it's evolved. They may say it's devolved. Yeah. But it's interesting where it's led us. And I think there are pros and cons to it. There are definite pros like journalists at their core are here to serve the community right. like I'm here to make this a better place that's my job and if I'm not doing it I'm not doing a good job um, but then on the flip side you've got people that are kind of making it 
all about them. Um, and Alex they, Jones. They just want to be like pretty and oh. have lots of Instagram followers. So it's kind of it, it's it's muddied the waters a little I, bit. I feel attacked. I, and I, it's all I want to be is pretty. Directed at you. <laughs> Stop being so pretty, and we wouldn't have any problems in this world. I I get that. There's somebody I know who used to work here that is now in a bigger market as a weather person. And sometimes the comments I see underneath her photos or in her live videos, like she'll post live videos, kind of behind the scenes stuff. And I, every once in a while, I'll tune in. I was like, oh, cool. She's doing. And then I start seeing, I was like, nope, got to close that out. Yeah. I can't uh, get too angry. Well, and it's also hard because a male, like my male counterpart is respected for his wisdom, his experience, his contribution. Um, but then women are sexualized right so they're not respected for the job that they're doing and i'm not saying this is in all scenarios but there is a difference in the way that um men and women are treated in this industry yeah by you know certain yeah viewers i guess and not all viewers it's just it's a small group but they're a loud group do you think that's getting better now that we're in 2019 and post i hate saying like post me too but i feel like that's such a benchmark or a landmark to be like almost like smacking dudes down being like hey don't be a perv don't be a creep yeah i think it's hard to tell because when i first started in this business like the internet wasn't really a thing you know what i mean and so you didn't hear any of this commentary or side chatter ever like there was no Facebook page for someone to come and say that Amanda Hera's eyebrows are ridiculous. You should get her a face job. You know what I mean? I apologize for that. Yeah, I I know it was you. (laughs) I'm holding on to the anger. (laughs) But you know what I mean? There was no platform for that to happen. So, and people aren't going to take the time to write a letter to say I I hate you. I was going to say there'd be calls or letters, but they would be so infrequent that... So I guess if we're just looking at like the time frame in which social media has played such a big role in our lives, I don't think that there has been any change in terms of the way female journalists are sexualized okay. by some people. Okay. I wonder if it'll be more of a long tail thing to where you may notice it 10 years from now, like this is a moment. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. I don't And I, I don't think know. I think it's hard. You know, I don't place blame on people who are making comments sexual you know it's like part of the job is relating to people and sharing a part of your life and if that's a picture of you on your instagram then someone's going to comment on that picture if you post it you know it's just a it's just a hard game, but I do think that there are younger people in this business who don't understand that they have to protect the integrity of their career um, and the job that they're doing. Yeah. And some of the content that they're posting just doesn't protect yeah. them at all. It just makes yeah. them very vulnerable. And that's a scary thing. Yeah. There's uh, somebody I know who's very young and she posted up a photo. I tried to explain this in one of the other ones. I got fussed at a little bit because I'm a big brother. My little sister yeah. is 12 years younger than me. So there's a lot of times my hackles go up or something like, and there's somebody I know that she posted a picture of her in like a sports bra. Now in the grand scheme of things, that should be okay. But part of me is like, please don't do that. There are so many assholes in the world. Please don't, don't give them fodder. Please don't. And, but then I got fussed at by one of my friends, like, well, you're slut shaming. And I was like, Oh gosh, <laughs> no, I couldn't get my friend to understand like the big brother. I was like, no, I'm literally a big dude and I'm used to, I want to help people or I want to protect people from shitheads. I don't know a nicer way to put it. Yeah. yeah. And I think for us in journalism, it's like you want people to pay attention to the message and the content that right. you're putting out there. You don't really necessarily want them. You don't want the focus to always be on you because then you're distracting from what's actually important and what's actually relevant to viewers. So, um, this, uh, have you ever thought about, do you, and maybe you don't want people knowing this, but do you have like a personal versus like a private versus a public 
like I'm assuming like Facebook and stuff, that's personal yeah. lockdown, but you probably have, I'm just guessing, coming from the social media world, a public page, a private page, mm -hmm. account, but then on like Instagram and stuff, do you... So, yeah, that's a good question. So on Instagram, everything's public. I just have one account. It's all public. Yeah. My thought is, if you are worried about posting something on your public account for the world to see... Yeah. For me... Yeah. I probably shouldn't post it anywhere because we all know things live on the internet. Yeah. Anyone can screenshot it. You know, it's just... Yeah. If you're going to have... if It just makes sense. Yeah. To just make everything public and stand behind it and be confident in what you're posting. So that's what I do on my Instagram. That's what I do on my Twitter. Now on Facebook, Mama's old. So she has a very <laughs> old private one, but I don't use it anymore because I am so active on my public Facebook page. Yeah. Like I don't have energy for the private one anymore. So I yeah. don't ever post anything there. I don't ever read messages from people on there. Yeah. And my friends will be like, did you see on Facebook that blah, blah, blah happened? I'm like, no, no. I sure didn't. Can, no. can you text me about that next time? <laughs> because I don't go on that. So yeah. like I miss a lot, but do you get a lot of like rando requests? I'm assuming. So, like what kind of requests? Like friend that, requests. Sorry, oh, friend, friend requests. requests. Yeah, yeah. I think like I'll go and look on my personal one, and I'll yeah. just there's like so many people I don't yeah. know. Which is, I mean, I guess I would accept them all if I was using that page, but I don't even use that. I okay. should probably just shut it down. You know what I mean? Uh, I would just because I've done this. This is I'm going to sound like such a douche when I say this. <laughs> I end up getting added by a lot of people because I'm involved in like music scene or mm -hmm. just Knoxville stuff. Mm -hmm. So I end up getting all these randos adding me. And most of them also because I work for myself. It's kind of like, well, I'm going to add you because I don't know if this is going to lead this to work. This could be a business thing. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I have no idea. But what I've started doing is like once every six months or so, I go through that friends list. I don't make an announcement. I don't anything. I just start deleting people. Mm. I'm like... And in fact, there's what's funny is there's someone sitting close to us. Oh no! <laughs> that I deleted. The plot thickens. Oh my gosh! Is there this is what's like. Be, no, this is what's like being around me. <laughs> Are you gonna take that microphone and turn no. it into a nunchuck? No, it's a woman, so I. Can't oh yeah. Do it. I'm gonna put my hands in my mm -hmm. pockets, but. Uh, Has she glared at you? Yeah, she a should. Time or two. It's okay. She should. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Um. But yeah, that's what I've done. Mm -hmm. So I would just go through and yeah. delete all anybody you don't deal with personally or something and be like, this is just locked down to us. But then I feel bad because I don't want people to think that I'm like ignoring their messages. I literally just don't see them. Yeah. So I think I just need to delete the page altogether because I never use it. The only th reason I think I keep it is so that I can ha have all my pictures that yeah. are like 400 years old. Yeah. But you also can't delete it because then you still have to use your page page. That is true. So, so I can't. guess you could make it deactive. I don't know. I can't remember because they have changed that rule changed a couple so times. Much. That did I mention that I'm the executive producer of digital content for WVLT? No. And I'm also <laughs> we will cut that part I, out. I, <laughs> I, I can't even keep up to speed with the ever changing Facebook rules. I mean, it really is an obstacle course. They change so often. Yeah. Okay, so here's a million dollar question since you're a very important digital. Very important. Very important. Uh, <laughs> are you all on Snapchat or TikTok? Okay, so the station is on Snapchat. I am on Snapchat, but here's the deal. We had like, this was a couple years ago, we had like this huge push at the station to yeah. really get involved with Snapchat. Like we had... Um, filters that were geofenced like game yep. day filter like we had the whole yep. shebang and it was fun it was really cool uh i stopped getting behind snapchat as the digital ep when i was using it for a public profile for myself a lot as well and getting so much inappropriate content oh, yeah. like i just can't um the amount of jarring messages oh, yeah. that I was receiving. I'm like, yeah. I can't expose myself to this and I'm certainly not going to expose no. any other member of our team to this. And like Instagram, in my opinion, I think is that's like the next wave. Yeah. And so I think that that's kind of where we're focusing our efforts. Okay. 
Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Snapchat, the guy who created Snapchat said, if the the interface does not make sense to you, Snapchat is not for you. So that's mm-hmm. the MO I've accepted because I don't understand. It's how so it's hard. Like yeah. I've never felt so old than when yeah. I was really <laughs> getting down and dirty with the Snapchat. Uh-huh. Like, and thankfully we have lots of millennials in the yeah. newsroom. So they're like, um, can you show grandma how to, <laughs> how do I put cat ears on? Yeah. So, um, I'm not mad about that. Now, you know, TikTok is basically Vine rebranded. It's yeah, it is. Same deal. So I was hot on the Vine. Oh, yeah. But now that I know it's just Vine with the new name, My only problem I'm is not there. And it I is such a time suck because I yeah. will just go on TikTok and just watch and be like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Like I watched some video that was just this weird <laughs> continuous loop of this guy painting and it looked like there was a door and some guy walked up and hit it and it was not a door and then it just perfectly kept looping. I was like, this <gasps> it's is magic. amazing. I put it in my Instagram story so you oh, can okay, see it so there. Oh, okay, so I can access it there. <laughs> <Yeah>. Fantastic. <laughs> For the next like 12 hours. But um, yeah, TikTok is a weird one. I'm seeing a lot of major brands get behind it. Like mm-hmm. ESPN, a lot of, I noticed like the Philadelphia Eagles are huge on it right now where they do a lot of like, behind the scenes fun stuff with the players okay yeah. so you're saying we should we should check it I out know. give it a second chance i would just go on there and look yeah. and see but it's also one of those weird things of being it i'm not slagging on knoxville because i love knoxville but it's also trying to reach the public at large mm-hmm. when you're not espn right exactly it's harder it's just, uh, is this something that our market embraces and is it something they're using and we'll see and want to see? And yeah. that's something that you really have to think about whenever you're going to dedicate energy to yeah. something new. And so, and you know, I, I will say I'm connected to a ton of people through social media. And when I get onto TikTok, I maybe have like 18 people that are on there. Mm-hmm. And I noticed 90% of them do not have profile images i was like okay so you're not really you just signed up to make sure to get your name oh to steal the handle before somebody else tries to sell it to you that's interesting yeah so i don't know that in this market it is that big yeah i'll tell you where it's big in this market 12 year old girls oh god i can't imagine like so many of my friends have like preteen kids and they are all over the tiktok yeah but that just kind of tells you, like, they're going to grow up. They're going to be the consumers of media. If they're yeah. using this platform, then that's something that, you know, maybe we want to embrace. It is funny. I thought about that it was like the new Vine, but I hadn't heard someone say it's Vine rebranded. No, it, 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 it actually scientifically is that. Yeah. Like, yeah. they didn't do anything but change the name, yeah. a relaunch, a rebrand. Yeah. And I remember, so I'm a big comedy nerd, and I remember a lot of comedians talking about Vine stars playing in comedy clubs there for a wow. while. And it was like... That's dri- a throwback. Driving them nuts, because it was like, you can't do anything. You're not editing your... You, <sighs> you can't edit this live performance together to make it seem really brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do now? Uh, <gasps> um, okay. And this may be an avenue I may need to check my time. I think we're good. Oh, no, no, no. Because what I'm about to ask. Oh, so Okay. We also live... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow this with a very uh, hopeful okay. thing. Trump. We live in the world of fake news and all that shit. Okay. Is with you, we're talking about like the commentary on Instagram and Facebook. Are you, all, are you seeing a lot of that of people bagging on you or bagging on WVLT at large because they're the new, uh, you know, fake news or whatever? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I think that we, um, I think that social media has allowed everyone to have a voice, which I think is great because in my mind, like the marketplace of ideas, that is my jam. The more ideas we have in the marketplace, the better outcomes, solutions, ideas yeah. that, that we can move forward with. So I think it's really cool. Um, I think what you're talking about is, I think this is what's at play. We have cable news networks yeah. that in order to fill the 24-hour cycle yeah. have had to 
create shows that are yeah. based on commentary, on editorializing yeah. of yeah. current events. And that is a, to me, in my opinion, that is symptomatic of a cable news network yeah. and entirely unrelated to local news. Okay. Like they are two separate beasts, two separate entities. Yeah. You will never see in local news, uh, or anywhere that I've worked for that matter, an editorial commentary. Like, we're just not going to do that. That's not why we signed up for this job. Like, I'm not here to have a side. I'm not here to tell you who to vote for or who's right or who's wrong. That's just not my nature. Like, I see everybody's point of view equally. I hear everybody. So I'm never going to be one that's going to be able to take a side. Like, I'm always going to be empathetic with each side of an argument or a conversation or a discussion. Um, And I think that that is largely what you'll find across all local news stations. Um, And it's really difficult because most people at home um, don't separate local news from these cable news networks and the 24 hour cycle and all that stuff that's kind of muddying the waters. Um, And so, yeah, we will get messages accusing us of, of having an agenda or yeah. having um, do, doing something on purpose. Yeah. And here's the actual truth of it. We have a lot of young people who come through this market, not just at this station, but every single station in this market yeah. has a lot of young people. Okay. And those young people are learning. They're doing the best they can. And yeah. we're doing the best that we can to guide them. So are, do we make mistakes? Absolutely. Yeah. Do we fix our mistakes? 1000%. Yeah. And if somebody comes to us with a grievance and says, I think that you gave too much time to this person and not enough time to this person, we're going to make that right because yeah. we're not in the business of making mistakes or taking sides or being unfair or being subjective. That's not what we're here to do. Mm-hmm. So um, it can be disheartening when people don't believe your intentions are good. Yeah. Um, And that's tough. That's really tough because I think anyone who walked into our newsroom and spent a day with us and got to know us, they would know that like we're in this for good, good reasons, good intentions. And there's no malice. Yeah. I think it's, I think from an outsider's view, it's also feels like it's getting harder in that you can present people with facts sometimes. And if they don't want to hear it, they just shut it down. So I got to imagine that's got to be hard. And I think. Or but maybe those are such fringe people that I they're think, just the loud ones. I think it's just human nature, right? Like yeah. everybody has an opinion and, I, and an idea. Mm-hmm. And that that's where their conviction lies. Um, and I think it's been like that throughout history. We yeah. just see it more and hear it more because of social media. Yeah. So, um yeah, I th- I think that may be why it feels that way. Yeah. Is because it's very easy for people to share their thoughts. Yeah. Well, and uh, this comes up a lot, but I've got friends on both sides that I call them like Facebook warriors. Because it's almost like they come home from work, they sit down, mm-hmm. they open up their laptop, and they start face- they're, they're It's almost like it's a job to where it's like... Go see a movie. It's nice outside. Go sit outside. That's why Instagram is so great. It's yeah. just pictures yeah. of puppies and rainbows <laughs> and whatever food your friend Phil had for dinner. <laughs> you can see whatever egregious thing that I'm eating that looks like four people need to eat it. <laughs> I don't know. Have you heard of Inskip Grill? Did you see that photo? Uh, I feel that. like I did, and it was but something like huge. It was like a sandwich or something. A burger, yeah. burger, the cane burger. Yes, yes. I yes, actually yes. challenged him to go there and eat it because I was the first one to eat it in one sitting, and he did it. He actually took me up on it and went, and I couldn't go, and I was so pissed because oh, I no. wanted to be there uh, when he was. Yeah. That's. That's another weird thing about being from here is explaining to people elsewhere that our mayor is a former wrestler. Or actually, he's a current wrestler because he wrestled the other night. Yeah. But it's like I was in a a pizza joint in Jacksonville 
and their little markers on the table instead of having like one, two, three, four, they had old wrestler photos. And so I got oh, Ric funny. Flair and I told the guy, I was like, so you all like wrestling? He's like, oh yeah. I was like, well, you gave me a great one here in Ric Flair. It's like, but our mayor is Kane. And he was like, nuh-uh. And I pulled up a photo of my dad, Kane, and I. And he was just like, what the? F-? I was like, yeah. You're Dude. like, I win. Did yeah. you drop the mic and walk out? <laughs> no, I had this massive pizza that... Oh. <laughs> You're like, no, I didn't leave without <laughs> no, eating the pizza. I was very hungry. <laughs> um, so in going in a more positive route, so because things feel, maybe they just feel so bad, do you all try to balance that out with like positive stories? You know, it's kind of a joke or something, the... the what is that called? The local story of, of positivity. Mm-hmm. That every episode, almost every broadcast has to have at least one. Positive. Yeah, the, it's commonly known as the kicker, and it's usually the end of the show, and it's the like kicker. a goat dancing yeah. with like a top hat on, or something <laughs> stupid like that. And that's, that I think like that's kind of, yeah, it's, it is. It's a TikTok video. I think that's kind of what you're talking about. But yeah. for us, here's, so I've worked in big markets, small markets. Yeah. Um, and Knoxville is by far the most unique market I've ever worked in. People okay. here are hungry for good news. People here are hungry to hear about what their neighbors are doing that is making this a better place to live. And that is so refreshing because you want to be able to tell those stories oh, yeah. of empowerment um, and success. And you want to be able to celebrate with your neighbors all the incredible things that are happening here. And this is a market that wants that content. And yeah. it's so great. I love it. So, and there's been, a, I think there's been a healthy mix at uh-huh. all the stations I've worked for. News Channel 5 in Nashville was probably yeah. the, the healthiest until I got here. Yeah. And if you know anything about News Channel 5, they are um, probably one of the top local news stations in the country. They're the okay. number one CBS affiliate in the country every year. Um, and they have a team of storied photojournalists that are so talented and do such a good job um, capturing the characters in the community. Right. And they do a really good job of that. And I think that we're able to do more of that here just yeah. because that's what people here want. They want yeah. more of that. So that's been really fun. Um, and there's a lot of good people doing great things here. Yeah, like we'll we'll have a really good positive story lead our 6 o'clock newscast. Okay. That doesn't happen in other stations or other markets. Like, And we're able to do that because of the great people here. Well, and you even look, I mean, it just happened, I think, last night, the Yassine's thing. Mm-hmm. But then he turned it around to immediately be positive. Like, yeah. no, if you want free food, we don't have money in here, but mm-hmm. if you want free food, come here and get free food. Yeah. And that's a great ambassador oh, for yeah. this area. Oh, Him yeah. and Dolly. Wait, Dolly Yassin 2020. I think I can I, vote you, for You might have to start a <laughs> campaign proposal. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I just love going into Yassin's and seeing all the notes that, like, students oh, have yeah. written on the wall. I love reading those. So, like, while you're waiting in line, it's not even – you don't even feel like you're waiting in line to get good food. You feel no. like you are – um, seeing the good in the community yeah. and it's so, uh, I just love it. I get shivers every time. <laughs> um, do you, do you all have to, do you all have like a balance or a percentage figured out to where how much your local coverage versus national coverage on your nightly show? So we're a local news station. So our primary focus is always going to be local, yeah. but, um, there are big stories happening across the country that affect people here, yeah. thereby making them locally relevant. Yeah. So we don't have a formula, but we do evaluate multiple times throughout the day uh, what our coverage lineup looks like, Yeah. Um, what's important, is it local, is it national, doesn't really matter. It's more what is affecting people here in East Tennessee. And if it's affecting people here, here in East Tennessee or something we think people want to know about, we're going to get on it. And what's yeah. made that easier is the company that owns WVLT, Gray Television, um, has, within the last year, purchased, uh, I think, like around 50 more television stations. Okay. And it's allowed us to strengthen our national coverage. Okay. So we have a, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but this is 
something no nobody in the market has yeah. and very rarely do other local affiliates have we have a washington dc bureau oh, um cool. that okay. reports directly for wvlt and so they're covering all of our lawmakers in the nation's capital i think it's like a team of six journalists okay. who are based in dc reporting uh creating content for east tennessee so like um, Congressman Burchett, you know, yeah. we're covering him, um, topics or bills that are important to people here. So we have like a direct pipeline, right. uh, for that. Um, which is really, really cool. Not only that, but gray is, uh, gray is really good at curating national content and doing okay. it quickly. So we provide that in our app. Um, okay. you'll get an alert from us through our yeah. app before you'll get it from CBS or from CNN or from Fox News or from the AP. Like huh. you're going to get okay. our alerts sometimes quicker than the national news okay. outlets. Do you all, is there also somebody in Nashville covering like state reps and stuff? So that's, What's actually very convenient is the station that I came from in Nashville, News yeah. Channel 5, is our affiliate here. Okay. So um, they have dedicated reporters that cover the Hill. And we have a really, really good partnership with okay. them. Um, and you will see their content on our air on a daily basis and vice versa. We're constantly in communication with them. So while we don't own that station, they are our affiliate. And yeah. essentially, we act as bureaus for each other so that we can really okay. cover as much of the state as possible. So if something like, like the Gatlinburg fires happen here then you all can cover that and share it with yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, if something to that magnitude happens, usually stations will send their own independent crews because okay. it'll be okay. quicker sometimes. So, for instance, when we had the wildfires, I had actually just landed from a trip in Seattle and drove straight out there to start yeah. covering. I think it was like 1030 at night yeah. and stayed throughout the night. And by the next day, the next morning, some of my former coworkers from News Channel 5 had already gotten to Gatlinburg and I was yeah. trying to point them in the right direction, tell them where to go. Um, and vice versa when they had the, uh, Gallatin church shooting, oh, we, yeah. we sent our crews there to just cover it directly because in those breaking situations, yeah. there's so much pressure put on one crew that, um, you want to alleviate, alleviate some of that, that pressure sense. off of them. So, that makes sense. Yeah. I gave you like a 20 hour long answer to that question. <laughs> I, I'm kind of wondering, this is, this is my own weird brain. I'm curious if like national news that follows local news has taken a hit now because of all of the news networks. You know what I mean? Because like, all the new what? All the new, all the actual news networks, Fox News, CNN, Headline, all that stuff because... When I was young, like my grandparents, they would sit down and watch the local news and watch the national news after. My mom and dad, same thing. But I'm wondering now, are more people, because they they can get it at, at moment's notice from the internet, from CNN, from whatever, I wonder, and that's just me thinking aloud. I think, um, I think that's a really good question. Yeah. The difference is when 6 o'clock rolls or 6.30 rolls yeah. around and Nora O'Donnell is going to do the CBS Evening News yeah. after Ted and I are done yeah. at 6 with the local news, they have ha they only have a morning show and then the evening show at the network. So they've yeah. got all day to like make sure that every little nugget in their half-hour newscast is like late breaking okay. just in. Okay. So um, they might have... There could be some overlap. Yeah. Usually they have a way to advance it. Okay. That's come down the pike in like the last 10 minutes. So yeah. they've got a brand new piece of video that um, gives a better look at a certain situation yeah. or the latest comment from the president, you know. So there's not a lot of overlap in that way. And our six o'clock newscast, we really try to make it hyper local so that yeah. you're not going to see a lot of redundancy. Um, do you also like preview what's coming on that? Yes, we have okay, access. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, so we have access to um, CBS's content that they feed to all the affiliates. So we know what we can cherry pick. We know yeah. what what they're going to be doing at six o'clock. So or at six thirty. But what is interesting? There's a there's 
a very strong uh, working relationship between a CBS affiliate and the CBS network to okay. prevent redundancy like what you're talking about yeah, yeah, between yeah. the 6 and the 6.30 yeah. newscasts. Now, Odin, my husband, when we were in Norway a couple of weeks ago, had me watch the local news. Uh-huh. And the top story for the local news was about a police cover-up of... Uh, it's a long story, but it was yeah. essentially a police cover-up. Yeah. That was their lead story. They probably spent 10 minutes talking about it in a half hour newscast. And then the network, National Network News came on. And do you know what led that that show? The exact same word for word, same reporters, same video, same soundbite, police cover up from the locals. So there's not... Yeah. We we do a pretty good job here communicating. They clearly are not talking to each other about how they're doing their lineup. And it could be that way with other stations... Like NBC affiliates, uh, they all have the same ABC affiliate. Oh, they all th- have we the same, all have kind the of same the same working same relationship. workflow, right? Okay. So you're okay. probably not going to find that in America, okay? But for sure in Norway, that's funny. How many? I'll have to ask him. How yeah. many people live in Norway? Like four, <laughs> and he moved out, so now it's just three. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, goat with the hat, and on that it. one sheep. But yeah. I mean, that's what makes it so cool is that it's just beautiful landscape, and you don't feel claustrophobic and okay what did i say uh geography and history football we already we're not talking about all that no but it's now i'm trying to remember where iceland is in relationship to norway so iceland is not connect it's not on the same denmark and norway are side by side uh sweden and norway are side by side and then finland education is kind of like above okay yeah okay because iceland there's a famous band out of Iceland called Sigur Rós. Okay. They're actually a big band, but they ended up going back and filming in Iceland going from town to town and just playing to like, almost like here at Wild Love and there would just be, you know, 200 people and they're like, we almost hit every single person in Iceland. It was gorgeous. It was amazing to see it like they'd be in a valley and you'd see all these vast mountains and everything. That's awesome. I have to assume, because I'm an idiot, that everything up there is going to be gorgeous and beautiful. And oh, yeah. So Iceland more looks like a rock because uh, it's a volcano, I think. So a it, rock. It just not one big old... A rock. No, not a rock. <laughs> a rock. <laughs> we are in the south. So. It looks like a volcano, right? Yeah. It looks like black sand from Hawaii or something you'd Hell see there. Yeah. But then Norway is looks very much like Seattle, like evergreen, okay. um, a lot of water everywhere, yeah. a lot of trees. A lot of rain, a lot of... Yeah. <laughs> um, have you... Before you met your husband, had you been out of the country a lot or? Uh, I'm trying to think. Does Canada count? Canada? Canada. Went to Uh, Canada a lot. I Um, have only been in, the only place I've been not in America or in the United States was in Canada for one hour because my GPS didn't work even though it was supposed to. So it's like, (laughs) oh shit. So by accident you ended up there. No, I ended up in there on purpose. But then I was like, I don't know that I can find my way back. I'm just going to go on back. I'm just going to go live under this rock. And also I was in Windsor, which is a shithole. Okay. Yeah, never heard of it. You're good. Okay. Don't visit. Right across the border from Detroit. It made Detroit look really nice. Really nice. (laughs) See, maybe that's part of their jam. (laughs) But... Okay, so yeah, so I was trying to think. No, I and that's that has been such a cool thing about meeting my husband and marrying him is he's really pushed me outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. Like I told you, like I have a lot of anxiety, and so yeah. um, traveling is it, it's a stressful thing for me. But with him, it's not. Like it's such an adventure, and yeah. so no, I'd never been out of the country before. Okay. Uh, Did you all get married over there? Yeah, we got engaged in Norway. We oh, got shit. married in Norway. Awesome. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming I will, spoiler alert, I will be talking to him later for any, <laughs> all the three people listening. Uh, I have to talk to him about flying on planes because that is one big deterrence about me flying to another country. I'm like. You don't want to get on a plane? No, I'm six foot seven and I know he's oh, like yeah, six okay. five. So. He ha- he'll have tricks for you because yeah. he he has all the schemes figured out. So I flew to Jacksonville to visit friends in St. Augustine, then flew back from Tampa. And I swear to God, that was four flights. 
because it was a layover in between both of those. Three out of those four, I could not fit in the seat. Uh, were you flying Allegiant? Mm, no, United maybe. Oh, okay. But the the seats have gotten even smaller to where I was sitting in, and I know I'm not a small dude, but it's also like, come, come on, on, people, make them like actual human size. Like there was one where I could not fit my knees in the seat, yeah. and I was like, and then I look over the exit row and see like short people. I'm like, mm. fucking. Please. Short people. Yeah. I want to, <laughs> and I should say normal size. But I always joke that I'm normal sized. Yeah. Like that'll probably be a joke with your husband. It's like finally someone normal, normal sized. Well, he like drags his legs out into the aisle and that's the only way he yeah. can fold himself into a plane. So he'll have some tips for you. So here's a funny thing. I have a very weird memory. I cannot remember the first time we met. I'm assuming it was at a Horse Haven. It was board at a Horse meeting. Haven board meeting. But I remember the first time I met your husband. Okay. He is much more memorable than me. No, no. (laughs) It's what you did. Oh, no. So I was at the uh, ice rink had just opened. I was there with my buddy Hubbard, who had, he's from Kentucky, and I think he remembered you from Lexington. Okay. Remember seeing you on TV in Lexington. And one of his friends is one of your friends, and I can't remember her name. Okay. Uh, But anyway. We were standing there because his daughter was on her first date with a boy. <gasps> and he was standing there. He's from Kentucky, and he's tough. So he was kind of standing down the He had a gun, and he <laughs> was ready to and fire. I had just, I don't know. I'd been to see a movie, and I was passing by, or he had texted me and said, if you're downtown, I'm over here. And I was like, I was like, do you want me to start staring at the boy? And he's like, no, watch this. He's like, hey, come here. And he made him come over, and he made me shake the kid's hand to be like, this is my friend Jody. You know, just wink, staring wink. at the boy. And the minute they left, I just started staring at the boy. <laughs> <laughs> Which, but I remember you all had, I think you all were just dating at that point, but turn, I turned around and you were coming out of a restaurant and you like beckoned me over. And then you looked at him and you looked at me and said, damn it, he, you're still taller than him. Because I was taller than him. You thought I was maybe taller. He was taller than me. Yeah. I nope. don't know why I remember that. I think it was just funny. Yeah. I think it was five different things. Because it was probably like, finally, somebody that's like stacking up. Cause you, I don't know. Have I ever shown you my card? No, but I want to see it. Does and it just say Jody tall guy? Yes, I am tall. Oh, my gosh. Six foot seven. Yeah. Even flat footed. So not even with heels. No. Wow. Yes, I used to play basketball, football, giraffe in school plays. Yeah. <laughs> so I have given out. Oh my gosh, that's this is a good card because otherwise people aren't going to remember you if it's just your name. So there are a few things about this. Notice it has no contact information. Mm-hmm. So I love handing it to somebody when they make a comment and walking away. Yeah. Um, well, this comes because I'm a graphic designer. So I came up with, I, somebody showed me one that was kind of similar mm-hmm. and I adapted it to make... Uh, but I have given out over 400 of these in five years and I can track that cause I bought 250 to start yeah. five years ago and I had to order 500 more. And that's a card that someone doesn't throw away either. No. Cause they're like, this is so good. And the funniest is, uh, do you know who David Sedaris is uh-huh. the author? Uh, he has a card because he, I actually just gave him one cause I saw him speak and it was a weird thing in that. He, when you went up afterwards to meet with him and get his signature, he, he, uh, you couldn't shake his hand. You couldn't get a photo with him. Like he was very, I think he's very like top eight. And I was like, I was like, I have to show you something. I think you're going to find it really funny. I reached in my pocket to grab the card and he was staring at the person from the BBC. You were like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And I handed him the card. He talked to me for 20 minutes about the microaggressions against the tall <laughs> he was like, you all really have it hard. Like, nobody feels bad. I was like, I'm becoming a David Sedaris story. This is amazing. Like, Wouldn't he, that be cool if, like, you were on This American Life yeah. and the story that he tells? And the other one is, have you ever heard of Mark Kowalczyk, Mm-mm. Sun Kill Moon, Red House Painters? He's this indie singer songwriter. Have you ever seen, uh, ah, shoot, what's that movie? Almost Famous. Oh, my God. That's my favorite movie. He's one of the band members in Almost Famous. Oh, he Famous. is? <gasps> yeah. I love so that Mark movie. Kalsik, so he played in Asheville a few weeks ago, and where he played was a Masonic temple. There was no stage. It was just floor and then painted black, and oh, that was the cool. stage. He moved the the uh, 
speaker. He moved everything out of the way so he could get into the audience, and he kept talking to people. <gasps> cool. So there's a point I got up, went and used the restroom, walked back in the door, and he was talking to a kid down front about... Uh, He's like, what is it with the beards in this town? Because we're in Asheville. Fair, fair question. And he was like, he's like, are you all, all lumberjacks? Like, what's going on? And I turned to the guy next to me who I did not know. And I was like, what's he talking about? He's like, he's making fun of beards. I was like, think I should walk down there? He's like, absolutely. So I walked down and I was sitting down front. And the minute I got in his eye line, he went, he went, so you have the beards, so the beards. And whoa, 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 don't go anywhere. Who are you? Who are you? What do you do for a living? I need security on my tour. And I gave him my card. You're like a magnet for celebrities. You're <laughs> no, like the celebrities that's celebrity. <laughs> that's only two. You are the celebrities <laughs> celebrity. So I gave him, I said, I started reaching in my wallet. He's like, I don't want your money. I already got your money. I was like, no, no, no. I gave him the card. He does. Now he's doing like spoken word stuff. Mm -hmm. He got that card. He talked about it for 10 minutes and he kept coming back to it. And he was like, I'm going to write, I'm going to do a spoken word about this. He's like, what do you do as a graphic designer? He's like, ah, he's like, I'm not kidding about security. I could probably use some security. <laughs> I feel like you would be terrible at security because you're so nice. Like, uh, you didn't know me when I was younger. Okay, but like, you kind of look intimidating because you're so tall and you have the beard. <laughs> But you're just like a, to me, a, like a gentle giant. But apparently there's a story I haven't heard. Yeah. So. Um, oh, yeah. There's lots of stories. But <laughs> um, he then, it was funny because later on some kid said, your music has meant a lot to me. I want to give you my book of poetry. So he gave him a book of handwritten poetry. He's like, this is amazing. He's like, I'm going to read this on the bus tonight. And he handed it to his keyboard player. He's like, be sure to sit this aside because I want to read this. I might perform some of this in the next town. And the kid was all excited. And he was like, but it's still not as good as this card. Like, I can't get over. I was like, oh, my, that poor kid, man. He bled for me. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm you just, just like, made a card as a I, joke. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted the next. I wish I had had a recording at the next one because I would love to hear. If he did it or if not. If he actually yeah. did it. Um, wow, we're going from funny. I'll have to segue to that. I have a very serious one. But nerves. Mm -hmm. So when you first started, did you have to get over your nerves? Or was it just, did it come natural? Do you still have nerves? I think what's really interesting about broadcast news is that you don't see all the thousands of people who are watching you. You're just looking okay. at a camera. Okay. So <clears throat> there's not... Any, for me, anyways, there's not a lot of nerves involved with that. Um, I am more nervous if I have to go, like, speak in front of a actual group or, like, live audience or something like that for, like, a fundraiser. That's where I'm like, oh, God, what do I do? <laughs> you know, Do you that. get asked to do that a lot? Um, Occasionally, yeah. So, like, a couple couple times a month I'll yeah. do a speaking engagement and um, I see Lori Tucker at a lot of these nonprofit events yeah. I go to she's like a, a pro to where I bumped in I saw her at like a UT game I almost went she kind of did a second take on me I almost went we've we've met but it's because I've photographed you for second harvest or mobile meals <laughs> at all these I see you at every nonprofit event mm -hmm. you speak at those yeah and that's that's the thing is that's why we do this we we want to help and we want to we well, yeah, horse haven we want to do stuff yeah so I actually just rolled off the horse haven board oh, did you? within the last god you've been year, on it for a while though for six or seven years yeah. I can't remember I think it's six years is how long I was on okay so now I'm with star I'm on the board at star yeah. which is the therapeutic riding academy yeah um, and for American Cancer Society and doing some work with a community coalition against human trafficking. Okay. So just kind of be bop around. Do you find this is going to be a two parter? Had you been into horses all your life or do you find some of those nonprofits in going out and finding a story <laughs> to report on? So I grew up riding horses. Um, okay. We had a horse farm in yeah. Snoqualmie. Um, my mom was the same way. She had horses when she was young. And so it's just something that we've always done together. Um, yeah. And we both showed horses together. And then when I moved 
you know, I took my horse with me to my first job in Evansville, Indiana. Of course, I couldn't afford to keep the horse, <laughs> so I had to work off my board in the barn on the weekends. So yeah. I was like cleaning 40 stalls every day oh on the God. weekends to keep the horse. Oof. Um, and then when I worked in Lexington, that was awesome. Cause the guy yeah. I dated at the time owned a horse farm. Nice. Um, and I had my track license. I was breaking two year olds for the track before I would oh, wow. go into work. So I kind of had two jobs when I was working there. And then I got my horse off the track, um, in Lexington and trained him and With your showed him folks living in Franklin. Did they have enough of a, a big enough to where they could store horses and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so everywhere that they've lived, they've had a horse. Yeah. They've had an equestrian facility. So they had a horse farm down in Franklin um, off Goose Creek Bypass, and uh, which was actually great because when I moved to Nashville yeah. to work, I was like, "Oh, well, this is great! <laughs> I will have free a free place to keep my horse." So that worked out nicely for me until it. <laughs> ended but <laughs> do they still live in Franklin? they have moved to uh don't say south florida Car don't say south okay. carolina thank god yeah. don't say florida don't say florida no, not florida <laughs> <laughs> um since you've been i don't i don't know but you've also have you known did you know about knoxville before you moved here yeah because i actually was this is a funny story um i think i did a live shot for wbir once oh really um when i worked in lexington because that was our affiliate and there was it was actually the uh um shannon christian chris newsome case yeah. one of the suspects had been uh captured in our okay. market in Lexington. Okay. And so I think I ended up doing a live report okay. for them during that time. But, you know, I've just working in this general area, I've always known of okay. Knoxville. You know, I, my brother went to UT here, right. so I'd visit him all the time, went to his graduation at uh, Thompson Bowling Arena. Yeah. So, yeah, it's always on my radar. And um, I just never realized how amazing it was until I yeah. moved here. But I also feel like, and I'm curious if you feel the same way, I feel like just over time, I feel like growing up and even when I was in high school, we were seen as a college town. And I feel like now that's one little factor. It's not, it's not the, the overarching the, thing. Totally. I think you're so right. And so when I was in Nashville, that was the time of the recession. Yeah. And like we were seeing all these high rises go up in the gulch and then the developers couldn't oh, yeah. sell anything. And it was yeah. just sitting there. Um, now you go back and it's like new restaurants, new bars, every single corner, there's new development for housing. And I honestly think that Knoxville is on the cusp of that. I mean, we have the industry, the businesses here, we have Regal. We have all of these. Pet safe. Uh, yeah, yeah, Pet Safe. We Discovery. have all the hospitals, scripts. Like, we've got it all. Yeah. Um, and I think the blow up is going to happen here next. I really do. And I, I don't want it to. I, I, I really don't want uh, it to. But it's going to because we're so much prettier than Nashville. Like, we <laughs> make use That's of our water. That's the next thing I'm going to have to cut out. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's, no. No. <laughs> no. I mean, I don't mean it in a bad way, but, yeah. like, in terms of natural resources. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. you don't have views in Nashville. You don't yeah. have water in Nashville. You're not 20 minutes, 40 minutes away from the smoke. Exactly. Piece. Like, there, this is a paradise for people who love the outdoors. But I feel like Asheville has kind of taken some of that burden. Like maybe. They have a lot of growth as yeah. well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I laugh that 15 years ago I could go and stay in downtown in Asheville for like 35 bucks a night and beer wasn't really a thing there. Mm -hmm. And now it's like. $500 to yep. go to the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. were just there a couple of weekends ago and like. We stayed in an Airbnb, yeah. and essentially this developer has built, like, 10 or 15 row houses with five stories yeah. on, like, this strip overlooking a river. Yeah. And all he does is rent them out and probably make a fortune. So there was a point, like, three or four years ago where somebody was trying to build, like, what looked like a hotel, and uh, it was just all going to be Airbnb for that very reason. And apparently the city of Nashville shut him down. But then I was over Are there. Are you talking about Nashville or Ash? Nash. Nashville. Nashville. Oh, okay. I'm talking about build, Ash. I know. Okay, cool. Well, this is lean. So, okay, sorry. But I, I thought uh, it was going to be out near the airport. My friend Lindsay was telling me about it. And they were like, the city shut them down. You can't develop for just that. And then when I was just there, they have a spot downtown that is powered by Airbnb. 
it was like a condo loft huh. thing. I was like, wait, I thought they shut this down. Like, it's so weird. Like, what Airbnb started with, whereas what it is now. So, my good friend who I worked with forever in Nashville, her brother is the founder of Airbnb. Really? Yeah. Can I get him on the podcast? Probably not. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> He's fancy. Yeah. He's not no um, little Amanda Hera. Well, here. He's a mover and a shaker. Here, I'll, uh, there is a cigar project that I am working on to where my buddy that I'm working with, I told him, I was like, my one goal is I want to sit down, smoke a cigar, and record a podcast with Sylvester Stallone. And he was like, that's not going to be as hard as you think it is. Really? Because you, you reach out to the publicist. Uh, you, you have to build up your base to mm-hmm. well, marketing. You have to get the following, and yeah. then they're like, okay, this could be yeah. worth it. Which means I need to hurry because he's not getting younger. You better step on it. Yeah. But that's, I was like, that's my only goal with this website and this app. I want to do that. So you're using me as a pawn to get to Sylvester (laughs) Stallone. That's not the Ramble Man. That's another one that I will not name because we're still developing that thing. Um, All right. Heavy topic. And then I'll go to, so 20 years ago. So you were in the news business when 9-11 happened. No, I was. So oh, I've been okay. in news for 16 years. Oh, I thought you said 20 for some no, reason. No, sorry. Um, no, I've been doing this for 16 years. I was in college on okay. 9-11. I was, Were you in journalism? Yeah, school? uh-huh. I was about to grad. Uh, no, that was my... Yeah, that was my second year of college. Um but yeah, that was a that was terrifying. I, and uh, I hate to ask this. Did they use it as like a example or something in the college or is that still too I think I was still doing a lot of my uh, non-program classes so I wasn't that far along and you know honestly I don't remember how or if they did use that but I what I do distinctly remember is I lived in a sorority and we had um, about 100 girls living in the house and my we slept in sleeping porches so like the top floor of the house is just all bunk beds and that's where everybody slept so it was early we're getting ready and people are watching the news and we're seeing what's going on and then we see the pentagon was hit yeah and i'm like this is not good we got to wake up stephanie martin who is my best friend yeah still is to this day her dad uh was like a senior weapons guy um okay for the bush administration he worked at the pentagon yeah and so we got her up. It took her, I think, two or three days to finally get in touch with him and Jesus. know that he was alive. Yeah. Really, really hard. And he's okay. He's fine. But, yeah. um, and that's, that's nothing compared to what people yeah. lost and yeah. endured and, um, Well, and sacrificed. I don't mean to be so callous about it, but do you, even at that time, were you looking at that as like, how would I handle this if I was a reporter or do you, you weren't even thinking about it or have you never reflected upon? I like think that? you always think about, would I be able to be like a Scott Pelly who yeah. went, you know, everybody's leaving except yeah. for first responders and journalists. I mean, he headed straight to ground zero, uh, at the twin towers and yeah. was watching all of this unfold that is a that is a terrifying thing to do um and yeah you wonder how 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 do you how would i get myself yeah. there and how would i perform under that kind of pressure but i mean and of course i've covered really crazy things in my career nothing yeah nothing to that magnitude of course but um you learn in those really tragic moments that people want the facts. Yeah. And they want to understand what's going on and they want to know if they're going to be safe and you've got to do your best to get the answers. Yeah. I, I am not a nice man. I will admit that because I'm about to say something kind of shitty. I remember when it happened. I remember we turned on, NBC, sorry. And it was the Today Show. And it was Katie Couric and Matt. Matt. Uh, probably Lauer and probably Ann Curry. No, it wasn't Ann Curry. It was just Katie Couric and Matt Creepy Lauer. And 
Tom Brokaw ended up coming in mm-hmm. after like 30 minutes or so. Because it was one of those weird things like when it happened, when the first plane hit. They weren't sure what was going on. Well, it was my dad called me at work. Holy crap. That bird was coming right for your face. <laughs> yeah. It didn't like what I'm about to say. It knows what I'm about to say. Um, he called me. And one of the women at work went next door to her house and brought, a, here's an old school thing, a boom box with a little TV in it. And the minute we turned it on, we saw the second plane hit. Ugh. I've heard so many people tell that story, like that they turned on their TV and saw the, yeah. but I rem- I'm, I'm shitty. I'm going to admit that. Tom Brokaw was trying to talk and Matt Lauer and Katie Kirk kept trying to interject. And I, I was almost like yelling at TV. He's like, get the hell out of the way. He's he's the guy. Let him do his thing. Yeah. It was almost like I felt like they were competing for screen time. And it's hard in those yeah. developing situations because you've got you have to remember each one of those people yeah. has a producer that's talking to them in their ear. So like gotcha. while Tom Brokaw is talking, yeah. a producer is speaking to them. But if Tom Brokaw is talking, he can't hear what the producer is saying. Yeah. So only Katie Couric hears it. Okay. So if it's a distru- an instruction like, hey, yeah. we need to take this next shot. This yeah. is what's happening. It's kind of up to okay. it's kind of up to Katie Couric to change the the conversation, yeah. uh, the direction of the conversation yeah. to the next element. Yeah. And so I can totally see why it would come off to viewers as like, why are they just being rude to each other or yeah. trying to fight for the attention? But there's so much behind the scenes at play yeah. that people don't necessarily know um, that could easily account for what you're talking okay. about. And I don't know. It was one of those yeah. where Tom Brokaw kept looking annoyed at like turning over like almost like, hey, the real news person is <laughs> no offense to right, them. Right, right. But like the real news person, like get the hell out of my way. Like mm-hmm. it was, I don't know. It was just funny. And it could vary. I don't remember that part of it, but yeah. I have seen situations that did kind of look like that. And yeah. it, you do wonder, is there more at play here or is it simply just one of these members of the team has information that the other yeah. doesn't and yeah. they've got to change All change right. course. I'll come yeah. around on that. So you're a bad person. <laughs> That's the moral of that story. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, has there ever been a, a story, and maybe there's a lot, both on positive and negative, that have affected you, like a really hard story? So I think of, I hate to invoke this name because it's cool to also shit on this person, even though I've invoked his name already once, Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. So Joe Rogan is a gun advocate, but when Newton happened, because Newtown, because mm-hmm. he grew up in Newton, Mass, like it, and he has little girls, it really bothered him Mm -hmm. saying we have to do something this is dumb like why are we doing it so it's weird seeing someone like that see it affect them so much Mm -hmm. so you having to deal day in and day out are there stories that you almost like i need to go home yeah i need to hug my baby i need to get a bottle of wine not a glass Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so i had uh, my son i think was a couple months old um when twin toddlers drown in their babysitter's pool yeah um last summer and i had worked a weekend i was trying to help out with a shift and so i worked a weekend and ended up getting in touch with the father of the twins um enrique orjuela and at that time his little girl had um passed away his little boy was on life support And that, I mean, I cried every time I talked to him. And um, that was one of the toughest things that I've ever, I just felt, I just felt for them so deeply. And they ended up coming in um, and giving us an interview. And our purpose for that wasn't to exploit their tragedy. Our purpose was... This is a story that we're reporting on because the babysitter is accused of doing something illegal and now criminal. She faces charges. Yeah. And we have to report that. Yeah. Um, but if we're going to do that, then we also have to be respectful of the lives yeah. that were lost. Yeah. And we are not going to make their lives a tragedy. That's not going to define their lives. Their yeah. lives will be defined by the, the light that they brought to this world. Okay. And so that was, that was my intention where all of the news stations are covering this, but it's not fair to these two 
little children yeah. to only be remembered that way. Yeah. And so I was so grateful that um, Enrique and Amelia, the, their parents came and spoke with me and they shared such amazing stories about their toddlers, about the twins, um, things that they did that were just hysterical. Like yeah. their special memories that they're going to hold on to forever. They shared that with us and yeah. we shared that with people at home and it was just so important that that we make it about the twins. It's literally a celebration of life. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, not to say we didn't make it about the babysitter either. I mean, um, I broke a couple different stories regarding her, including the lawsuit that the parents had filed against her and now the criminal charges that were yeah. filed against her. And that's a story that I, both of those stories I broke. And the criminal charges... Um, came after the lawsuit and I I lost it on air. I mean, I started crying yeah. on air talking about that lawsuit. Um, it's hard. It's the hardest thing I've had yeah. to cover and it doesn't even compare to how hard it was for those parents. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's tough. But, but th they're also positive I stories. I think so. And the big yeah. thing that came out about that is Every single daycare that's licensed by the state of Tennessee is searchable online. Yeah. And you can find out if there have been violations or complaints filed against that child care center. And if that child care center isn't licensed, you need to take that into account to ensure that your kids are going somewhere that's safe. And I think that's the best thing that could have come out of this is that yeah. we're able to tell families at home, here's how to protect your family. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a good way for them to also be remembered. Yeah. And um, the little boy was a, an organ donor, and he saved, I think, three or four people's that's lives. Awesome. Yeah. I feel weird saying that's awesome, but that's awesome. Like, that's, if I anything mean, good is going to come out of a bad situation, that's... Amelia and Arinke said that he is their hero. Yeah. So... Uh, this will be the final question. What excites you? Like, what do you think is next? Or or is it the not knowing what's next? Like, what excites you for the future? The future of life? Of broadcasting oh, or broadcasting. of news. Okay. Um, I think it's going <laughs> to be... Of life. Yeah, or of life in general. I, <laughs> I think it's going to be really interesting to see how news organizations shift or pivot in a way that matches consumer behavior. Okay. So I think the days of people sitting down and watching the six o'clock news on their TV set are over Yeah. Uh, or coming to an end. Okay. Um, I think people want everything on demand, whether that be a news story yeah. or um, a newscast. So whether that's on like an OTT device or on an app, I think that the traditional newscast is going to shift in a way that reaches more people yeah. in more different in more ways. Okay. So I think I'm excited to see how, and I have some ideas on what what go. I want that to look like and how I think at WVLT we can do that. Um, so. TBD. Stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Yeah. Thanks for having me.